Welcome back, baby kids, to another week of May, where we are learning about training and practicing and our word for the month, commitment. Commitment is making a plan and putting it into practice. Now we have learned a lot of cool Bible stories so far, and we heard a cool story from Pastor Dave last week. But today we're talking about one of my favorite characters in the Bible, Peter, and him recognizing something very important and special about Jesus. Now, before we get into our worship song, um, it's just a little bit chilly. It's icebreaker time. Let's check out our icebreakers. Hey, baby kids, welcome back to another week of icebreakers. Stephanie won one, I won two. So let's see if we can tie it up. We do have five weeks in May, so there will be a clear winner. All right, this week's challenge is the chopstick marshmallow race. So we need you guys to find some chopsticks in your house. And the rules of the game is you can only use your chopsticks, you cannot use your hands. And you're gonna try to put as many marsh, oh boy, I'm not gonna be good at this, marshmallows onto the plate. When the 60 seconds are up, we will see who has more marshmallows. All right, any questions? No, we good? Matt, do we have one minute on the timer? All right, three. Two, one, go. Here we go, I'm on a roll. <laughs> oh, <boy>. <laughs> <laughs> and we are going to worship God together. Got a rhythm in my heart and in my soul Got a reason for this joy I can't control
Dear God, this is my first. Mm, no, this is a letter. Mm -mm. This is a way to. I don't exactly know what this is. I guess it's kind of a beginning for me. And I guess you too. A few weeks ago, small group kind of changed. I started wanting to know more about who you are and what it means to follow you. When I asked Jeff, my small group leader, what I should do, he told me about his journal. I was afraid I wouldn't know what to write. And he told me to just write you a letter about some of the stuff we were talking about in small group, like praying and recognizing who you are. I never thought about writing a letter to God, but this feels like it's going to work. God, can you please help me keep this going? I think I may have a lot I need to talk with you about. Zach. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Matthew, Chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. Jesus and his 12 closest friends walked along the dusty road from Galilee to the town of Caesarea Philippi. Perhaps Peter walked with James and John. Philippi? Seems out of the way. Uh, maybe that's the point. Little peace and quiet? Jesus can't take two steps in Galilee without a thousand people showing up. Yeah, they say he's... Well, I've heard everything. Peter stared at the high hills ahead, one of which was home to a deep cavern said to be the birthplace of a Greek god. Philippi was filled with monuments and temples to other fake gods. Peter? What? Oh. Peter looked around. Jesus and his other friends had stopped under a shady tree. Peter, James, and John stepped off the road to join them. Water break. As his disciples rested, Jesus turned and faced them. Perhaps he knew that here, near Philippi, where so many people believed in false gods, it was important that his disciples knew and spoke the truth. Who do people say the Son of Man is? Jesus' friends understood that when he said Son of Man, he meant himself. Some people say that you're John the Baptist. What people? Hello, John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin. Well, that's what they say, just saying. Well, some people say you're Elijah or Jeremiah. Yeah, or one of the prophets. People had been comparing Jesus to many important figures in Jewish history. Men who called the nation to repent. Men who did miracles. Men who spoke the word of God. But Jesus was so much more than that. What about you? Who do you say that I am? As Jesus looked squarely at his disciples, they fidgeted. They had seen Jesus feed thousands of people from one boy's lunch. They'd seen him heal countless sick people. They'd seen him command evil spirits to leave. They knew Jesus was special. But it's one thing to think something and another to say it. Peter, as usual, was the one to take the leap. You are the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. Jesus smiled. Blessed are you, Simon. No mere human showed this to you. My Father in heaven showed it to you. Here's what I tell you. You are Peter. Jesus was giving Simon a new identity. Peter means stone, something strong, sturdy. Jesus continued. On this rock, I will build my church. The gates of hell will not be strong enough to destroy it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. What you lock on earth will be locked in heaven. What you unlock on earth will be unlocked in heaven. The disciples were amazed. Teacher's pet. Hey, we were all thinking it. And I don't know, the whole locking and unlocking thing sounds like a really big responsibility. Jesus knew there were things that would take his friends 
a while to understand. So he told them, Do not tell anyone yet that I am the Messiah. Okay. Yes, sir. Got you. Peter had the courage to speak what he knew to be true. And when the time was right, he would share it with everyone he met. Peter had the courage to speak about what he knew to be true. As kids, sometimes it's challenging to know everything about Jesus and who he is. But God has given us his living word, the Bible, and trusted adults in your life to help you answer tough questions. Hannah and I and your parents are here to answer any questions you may have about Jesus and the Bible. Just like Peter, God wants us to talk about him. He wants the world to know about who he is and how much he loves them. And he invites us to join him in this mission. Is there someone in your life that you would like to talk about God's love with? Maybe there's a family member or a friend. I encourage you to think about someone you want to talk about God with. Pray for God's courage to speak with them about our amazing God. All right, kids, so the one thing you need to remember today is we can practice talking about God. That's so important. All right, it's time for our memory verse. We've been working on it for four weeks now, so we're gonna say it to the point that we know it now. So it's gonna come up on the screen right now. Look it over. Perfect, all right, let's say it together. For physical training has some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for the present. And now we're gonna add the next section, which says, and the life to come. All right, let's put it all together. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for the present and the life to come. And the last thing we get to do is next week where we get to learn the verse's address. And then we know it super well. So maybe even next week we won't even put up the verse and you can just know it from memory. Let's go grab our younger brother or sister for our preschool service.
me how to play hopscotch and gave me this hopscotch game to put in the clubhouse. Want to see? Oh, wait. It helps if you pretend to be a bunny. They're the best at hopping. Here I go. Count with me. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now it's time to turn around and go back. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Watch this. Four, three, two, one. This is fun, but it would be more fun if my friends were here. But my uncle isn't here to teach them how to play. Ho! Ho! Hey, it's Ollie. Hello, Manny. Ho! Ho! Playing all by yourself, are you? Yes, I am, Ollie. My uncle isn't here to teach my friends how to play. Uncles are good teachers, it's true. But young people can be teachers, too. Listen to this story. Just follow me through. Ho! Ho! Follow me through. and welcome to my cupcake food truck. Want to see my latest creation? Ta-da! <laughs> they are my mini cupcakes because good things come in small packages. Which reminds me of today's story. If you're ready for the story, on the count of three, yell, tell me a story. One, two, three. Tell me a story. Today's true story from the Bible is about a king. Now, when I think of kings, I think of someone older and wiser, someone who can lead the people. But the king in today's story was a kid. Yep, King Josiah was only a kid. Now, think about what most kids are doing, like eating ice cream or playing with blocks or kicking a soccer ball. But this kid was actually the king, which meant he had a lot of people to lead. King Josiah wanted to do what was right. He wanted to show the people how to go God's way. One day, his workers found a very special book. Do you know what it said? That God's way is perfect. <laughs> that God loves us and knows what's best for us. So right then and there, King Josiah Jump, jumped, <laughs> and went God's way. And then he called all the people and told them that God's way is perfect. God loves you and God knows what's best for you. So jump, jump, and go God's way, everyone. Wow, isn't that amazing? Even when King Josiah was a kid, he told others about God's way. Now, here's a question. Do you think you, as a kid, could also tell others about God's way? Of course you can! There are lots of ways to do it. You can tell a friend, hey, God's way is perfect. Or you could show them every day when you go God's way. They'll see what God's way is like when they watch you sharing and helping others. No matter if you're young or old, you can go God's way and tell others about it because God's way is perfect. <laughs> did you like the story? If you did, give it two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. <gasps> hey there, Ollie, tell me, whose way is perfect? 
God's way is perfect. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, whose way is perfect? God's way is perfect. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. See you next time. Bye. So there's your story, and it's all true. Josiah taught others about God's way, and so can you. Ho, ho. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Ho, ho. Wow, Josiah became a king when he was a kid. And he taught others to follow God's way because God's way is perfect. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did say got it, get it? Got it! Good! I can tell others that God's way is perfect and I can teach my friends how to play hopscotch. I'll see you guys next time. I think I'm gonna play some more. God's way is perfect. 2 Samuel 22, 31. God's way is perfect. 2 Samuel 22, 31. Wow, what a cool story about King Josiah. He was so young and yet he made a big difference. And we can tell others about God's way. Did you like that story, Ollie? You did? Me too. Well, let's pray together, boys and girls, and let's do our little prayer intro. Ready? P-R-A-Y. Dear Jesus, Thank you that we can know your way and we can follow your way. God, I pray for strength and patience right now during this hard time and that we would love others and love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, boys and girls, I hope you have a wonderful day. We'll see you next week.